Welcome back ladies and gentlemen for the day 2 of the India Insurance Summit 2021. So that was a very great presentation by Mr. Pallav Das from Vimo on the future of financial sales and distribution. Next we move on to an exciting panel session of the day. But before that I would like to highlight that we have 900 attendees who are watching us live at this moment. Now moving on to our next panel discussion of the day an exclusive MD and CEO panel session. The topic for this session is a view from the top building the insurers of tomorrow. Some of the key pointers that would be highlighted in this panel session will be on traveling in the time machine, the insurance industry in 2030, how can insurers become truly agile in volatile market, existing position of the insurance industry, understanding the leadership role within the digital transformation journey and many more. and to discuss on this exclusive topic i would like to introduce the panel members in the order of sequence mr tapan singhal managing director and ceo from bajaj alliance general insurance joining mr singhal we have mr rupa masthana managing director and ceo from liberty general insurance next we have mr neeraj prakash managing director from shriram general insurance joining mr prakash we have mr shankar garigi party CEO and country manager from Lloyds India next we have executive director and CEO for Edelweiss General Insurance joining ms ghosh we have mr rishab gandhi deputy ceo for india first life insurance joining mr Join gandhi we have mr vikas mr deputy ceo for magna hdl general insurance next we have mr rishi mathu digital and strategy officer kanara ssbc obc life insurance now i would like to introduce the moderator for the panel session mr akash sinha co founder and ceo for cash mr sinha is now being the panel moderator i would request you to take the discussion thanks a lot devansh i think welcome everyone again i think this is one of the most elite and expert panels from the insurance segment we have today So I'd like to thank all of you to you know spending your valuable time with us, right? Just to give us background to our audience, insurance is one of the fastest growing segment of the financial services space, right? I mean, insurance today constitute up to four percent of the GDP of the nation. It's not, it's not, it's not big, and we have a lot of potential for this to grow beyond. And India as a country, you know, is not a very saturated market when it comes to insurance segment, and that's where what we are going to discuss today. Right. I mean, we're going to discuss since we have entered new decade, how will this industry will look like in next ten years? What are the growth drivers going to be in this industry? And what can a business deep do today to be ready for the end of the decade or next decade of growth? Right. To touch base on this question, I'd like to call Mr. Neeraj to Mr. Neeraj to share his views. He has been a veteran in the insurance industry, and would like to listen from him. Like, what are the things a business should do today to be ready for the next change? and what are your his views around you know automation in the industry how can we reduce cost make the entire process more efficient so neeraj over to you you are on mute mr neeraj ah uh, just yeah no i'm no, um, audible yeah yeah fine guys thank you very much for inviting me uh definitely what about the topics which you have selected for today most of the topics are related to your futures and uh, whenever we talk about the future it is nothing else we come to the conclusion to how the it will behave in years 20 years or 30 years ahead and that is how things are happening in fact when you have given this uh, the time machine i was just going through it and the book was written in 1895 by hg wells and this is really amazing the guy who is so after that in that period he has thought about it that the human being can move ahead with the time machine so such things are really very amazing and these kind of science fictions are giving us the reason how we can look uh, 10 years 15 years 20 years ahead of the time yeah in fact as far as the industry is concerned i was talking to the panelists before that uh, that i was going through the googles and i was trying to find out some good stuff uh, that what could be the relevant and uh, it was really very really amazing for me that reports of the mckinsey bostons and other consultants and people are talking about that in 2030 uh, the number of agents the intermediaries may be reduced because the the, the current generations of uh, the old generations will retire 
and the new generation will use the technology and the productivity will go up hence the number may go down but the productivity will go high however the perceptions and our mindset says that in future the number of internet uh, will also grow along with the gwp or with the industry uh, but this is one prospect which i was not able to visualize that how it, it is going to happen definitely the technology is going to play a major role it is not only for the insurance company but i believe that it is for all the stakeholders who ever in this business whether it is insurance company or the garage or the intermediaries or the oem who ever in this so it will be end to end and uh, definitely we are talking about the artificial intelligence blockchains blah blah and these are the things which will minimize the time and the time will be the essence how fast and it is from the underwriting to the pricing everything will be uh, depends upon that how fast you take the decisions there will be certainly certain things will come where the automation will play a vital role people are talking that uh, in future the smart machine will be our colleague so what could be the future the critical thinking or the smart thinking or you are thinking something different only you can be ahead from the machine otherwise machine will replace you so such kind of things are going to happen in the future and for that the human being to be ready for that and until unless the person who is not very critical in his thinking will not compete with the machine so these are the things which is going to happen in the future also as far as the insurance is concerned the certain kind of claims or underwriting will be taken care by the automations so the decision will be much faster today the underwriter takes time to take the decision for one thing for one hour or one and a half hours maybe we maybe in future it will be taken only in 2 3 minutes for certain kind of complex risk definitely and ultimately the human intervention will be there but most of the things will be taken care by the machine with the artificial intelligence and other mechanism so this is how i think that over a period of time things will change and i believe that uh, this covid has given a new perspective to everyone uh, in fact it is really very really amazing i believe that it is for you people also that prior to covid we were not using the google meet microsoft team zoom and we are used to uh, having the video conferencing which was expensive so our joint venture is salem which is south africa so we asked that why you have not suggested might be the india is backward in the it but you are much ahead why not you have suggested why you are spending money on this they had no answer so certain things which covid has given us a new perspective and to be very honest during this covid period i am in much better way to touch with my colleagues my friends my relatives earlier if i want to have a meeting then i have to plan one month before even for one meeting in mumbai i have to fly from jaipur to mumbai then i have a meeting come back in the evening late evening to the jaipur and i was thinking that i am doing a great job today you have fixed up the meeting and and fortunately this is also really very amazing for all the indians particularly whenever it is the google meet zoom or whatever the media through which you are coming on this kind of platform if the time is given 130 most of the people are 120 25 on the screen so we started giving the value to the time and this is the change which is going to happen in the future and definitely change the work culture of the country and insurance people will believe that whatever the problems will be solved in a minutes or seconds so the it will start behaving a big role or start being a big role in the whole business scenario so it is not only the business analyst but uh, how the will allocate the it resource in the company if the company size of 5000 people the contribution of the it people will be much made, will be much important and major and uh, the underwriting and claims as i told you will be done by the machines so this is how i believe that over a period of time things will change and the time will be the essence for all kind of business particularly in the general insurance and in general insurance the number of products are many new products which is uh, popular in uh, 
some different countries. In fact, uh, when we had a discussion with uh, our partner, South African, they said, why not you are launching the funeral uh, insurance? The funeral insurance is very popular in UK, South Africa, and some other countries also. But being Indian, we are very conservative and having a different kind of sentiment. So we can't think that my funeral will be also insured. But I believe that over a period of time, it is not the only our sentiments or the emotions. There will be other things will be also involved over a period of time. And such kind of new products will be also introduced in this kind of market. And uh, more innovative products and more small ticket size products will play a major role over a period of time. Today, we are doing the insurance of the mobile. Tomorrow, we'll do the insurance of the mobile battery also, with cheap also. So certain things will come into the picture. So for each and every thing, insurance company will try to do some innovative things so that everything should be uh, <coughs> insured. And this is how uh, the penetration can go up. And more awareness, we will hope, hopefully through the digital media, we will create more awareness in the rural pockets where today the insurance companies wants to go to the rural pockets, but due to certain constraint, the penetration in the rural pockets, which is expensive and you are not getting such kind of returns from there, are not reaching over there. But over a period of time, due to help of the technology, you can reach over there and you can do it. So I believe that over a period of time, technology will definitely play a major role, not only for the expansion, but giving, but giving the customer satisfactions and more engagement of the employees with the customer also. Thank you very much, Akas. Thank you, Nate, for that. I think to sum it up, you touched upon the like the role that IT is going to play in transforming the operations of the company. You touched upon that's a very interesting word, smart machines. I think we have been using IoT a lot of places, but a smart machine seems much more easy to recognize. Right? Third, you touched upon innovative products. Right? I think these are very, very great and said many years. And as per a lot of market reports, right, they are claiming in the next 10 years, the operating cost of insurance company will come down by 40%. The same time experience will go for the customer, right? That is one. Second, what they're claiming that companies will stop looking like a traditional insurance company and will look more like a tech companies. Right? So for these two points, I'd like to you know ask Mr. Tapan, what are your views around these two points, and then how much relevance do you see in these kind of statements, both in terms of reducing costing, and secondly, looking more like a tech company. You are on mute, Mr. Tapan. Thank you. So I was saying that I have a very different view you know, from what has just been stated. And uh, it is based on what is happening in the world currently. And uh, if I look at what exactly insurance is about. So we look at insurance, especially general insurance, from a perspective of how we look at, let's say, banking or no other banks. Uh, and let me ask you one question. COVID, uh, people are aware about the risk. Everybody is. Yeah. Anybody can get COVID. Yeah. The average yeah. cost is about two, two, two and a half lakhs. Yeah. You have a product on the website of each company and the cost would not be more than 600, 700 rupees a year. No underwriting, straight through, no, just 15 day waiting. And in India, if I remove uh, the below poverty line 40 crores covered by government of India, the entire industry with all these years have only been able to insure 10 to 12 crores, including GMC and everything. Yeah. That's right. 75 crore people not insured. So why are they not buying like crazy? Like no awareness is there, a zero underwriting, straight through high tech, no, and uh, these people afford uh, two rupees uh, or three rupees a day, 70 crore, in, no. So why server not cashing? First question. Second question. Let's look at motor uh, uh, policies. In India, we have a high penetration. In countries where motor is not mandatory by government. And they say Indonesia, they didn't have mandatory motor. What was the penetration of motor insurance in Indonesia? Just about 10% or so. So if we look at the GI business, is tech the issue or is willingness to buy the issue? No. If tech was the issue, then we would have sold 70 crore Indians COVID policy. No. A brilliant product, amazing price. Uh, the price from customer perspective, 200, 300 percent loss ratios. No, no underwriting, single straight to one click. So, is tech the issue? First point. Second point, 
we, from a GI perspective, should always look at what is happening to industries around us. We are hugely dependent on what happens around us. It's not about what no we think. Let's look at cars. Let's hear what Elon Musk told for Tesla for insurance. He says, my guarantee, if anything goes wrong. So technically, if you buy a Tesla, you don't require an insurance because Elon Musk will pay if anything goes wrong. No. Now, if that be the case, an electric vehicle coming in with no maintenance requirement, uh, no spare parts requirement. And if, if you see the speed at which electric vehicles are moving in, now Tesla is coming to India also. Then in 10 years time, do we actually have motor insurance happening? Or is it a guarantee by the manufacturer themselves? Now that is 40% of business gone. Let's look at health. Prime Minister comes, announces, um, no, Prime Minister health scheme. That's below power drain. Very good. Jammu and Kashmir government announces 5 lakh floater policy for every member of Jammu and Kashmir, no state. Every, not about below power lines. Which means that if you're in Jammu and Kashmir, technically you don't require health policy. But up to 5 lakh sum insured, it's guaranteed by the government, no. They, they, they said that they will provide the premium on the car. Now, if JNK has done that, and I heard uh, West Bengal also talking about it, in five years' time, why would not every state government provide us a five lakh sum insured? No, to every citizen of India, no, if health would be a big thing. Now, if that happens, your 30 percent of your business goes away. No, then why have GMC? Why have retail health? 70 percent of your business goes away immediately. Huh? Now we're talking about these innovations of tech and you're know, talking about no straight through and no uh, underwriting happening uh, on, a, on a hyper speed fair. But what, what will the customer buy from you? He's not buying automobile insurance from you. That's guaranteed by the OEM. He's not buying health from you. That's guaranteed by the government you know, in 10 years time. And minus, let's say if I take out motor health crop and industrial fire, no commercial fire insurance. We already ninety percent of the business gone from today's time. So commercial fire may remain. Then, are we really thinking about what the future is? Are we trying to extrapolate what we hear from consultants? No, okay, this is what's going to happen. That's going to happen. Invest more in tech. On tech, I told an interesting thing to my head operations. I worked in insurance industry when there's no tech, no, uh, early on, and that time we had manual. We had typist. We are stenographers. I don't know how many of you would remember the time. So my typist would issue 100 policies a day. Today, in my company, we issue with all this tech and AI, ML, and all this stuff, about 45 policies a day. So <laughs> it's actually very funny. Huh? In pure manual days, when there was no tech, my productivity per person of issuance of policy was two times, or 200% of what I call it, of what the productivity is today, with hyper tech, all the machine that you're talking about. Is the investment, no, at the scale that we're thinking of in tech, the answer, or are we missing the bigger bus is the question. So let's understand industry first well enough, no, so start banking on that, become a tech company and no, things will just happen smoothly. If it had to have happened, Corona would be selling like crazy, no, the policy. It has everything that you're talking about. Straight through process, no underwriting, single click, uh, need, awareness, uh, high risk, everything. No, amazing pricing. So I think that is a bigger question that we should be doing, trying to answer while you look at the future. So what do you oh, suggestion you? set the panel? I mean, like what should be the growth driver insurance company should focus on? Since you said tech is definitely not the good from your opinion. Then uh, like very curious tech, to know. Like tech, tech, tech is something which is like it is like given, Madlab, no? Today mobile hmm. is given, no? Uh, you use social media is given, Madlab, no? It is not something you focus on. Are you getting a cash? There's something which are given about. You don't talk about industry yeah. that this is what they're like, Let's look at Zongan. Let's look at Lemonade. Let's look at tech companies in the world. Let's look at Zongan. What did Zongan sell? Broadly, no? Over time. Single day sale. Some weather derivative of no AC, no? Warming up. What did Lemonade sell? What is the combined issue currently after so many years? Will you buy shares of a company with such high combined ratio? No. Currently, we understand the business well, and they're high tech companies. So I'm just I'm trying to just ask you that: Are we trying to talk of the future from what is being told to us by consultants, 
or are we really looking at facts you no know, what's happening in the world are looking at facts what's happening in industries around us and trying to figure out that in 5 to 7 years will a business remain no uh, uh, actually i'm so sorry to interrupt you but uh, uh, a special request if uh, mr neeraj prakash can be excused he has some personal emergency to attend uh, if he can be excused yeah sure sorry thanks mr neeraj i'm really very sorry i have to leave because uh, there is some family at the thank, thank you thank you so much for joining us prakash great yeah, thanks to tapan for that yeah thank you that was a very different view and a fresh view i'd say um no for that fine i'll move to the next next question discussion i think so now we just discuss about the focus where should we focus on what are the things we should really care about now we will i'll just right, we just have been through the pandemics not over but we have been through it for last 12 months right so the larger question is how can a company you know try to be relevant during the volatile time or when timing is uncertain right? i mean all of you must have done a lot of great things during the pandemic to stay through it so my larger question brings me how did you navigate through the volatile market and what are what are the things the insurance should do to make their you know future journey easy for these kind of crises i mean how can you increase the time to market how can you ensure a product it doesn't go down right and what are the things you did during the pandemic so for this i'd like to request mr rupam to share his view on you know like volatility to the market and what can what are the things that company should do to be relevant be impact Yeah, thanks, Akash, and uh, hello to everybody on the panel. And thank you for uh, having me here. I, I hope you can hear me properly. Yeah, yeah, perfect. So uh, you know, uh, sticking off from uh, where uh, Tapan finished, uh, I think uh, you know we are in a very immature industry. Uh, the general insurance business is a very immature business, uh, and uh, actually uh, that is the reason why uh, you know there is no singular view on the industry. Uh, you know, and and going by uh, consultants, if uh, I was to kind of rewind and go back uh, four or five years and actually look at the consultant report and see how much of that has come true, uh, I think it'll be quite embarrassing for the consultants. So uh, you know, to be able to predict future is is I think a very foolhardy <laughs> thing to do. Uh, you know, especially in an immature country, an immature economy. Uh, you know, young uh, uh, economy, a young demography. and a very immature business uh, in that kind of a scenario uh, you know when you have a pandemic that hits you uh, actually uh, you know the way i look at it is that uh, we are such a volatile business uh, that uh, the 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 uh, the you know incremental effect of the pandemic was probably not as much as this was probably seen in other uh, more mature more uh, uh, you know more steady uh, businesses and more steady economies mm -hmm. so that uh, to me was uh, you know i think Uh, a, 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 a sign of comfort, uh, first of all. I think the second thing, uh, you know, which uh, we saw pretty much across the industry, was the uh, almost seamless transition uh, that the industry uh, I was able to make. Uh, you know, in the situation that was kind of thrust upon all of us uh, with very short notice, uh, and that is something which again uh, I think goes back to uh, the fact that. uh you partly to the fact that uh, you know when that happened uh, the industry came to a standstill you know i mean no cars were sold uh, you know uh, everybody was uh, basically uh, not doing uh, much business uh, and that actually helped the uh, insurance companies to make that transition uh, from a uh, you know very traditional fully work from uh, office kind of a situation to a, a very very unknown and a first in lifetime uh, for most of us uh, a fully work from home kind of a situation Uh, and i think the investment in in technology is helped but i think going back uh, tapan was saying you know technology was an enabler you know it is not a driver uh, of of business uh, and i think the drivers of business uh, are are what uh, you know we need to think about uh, so in the pandemic kind of a situation i think the uh, one of the key uh, uh, you know trends that came out was the need for us uh, to be first of all agile uh, second of all uh, you know be completely ready to manage change and and that is probably a skill that 
uh, you know, has now uh, kind of leapfrogged quite a few slots up uh, in terms of the people uh, that run a business. Uh, so the skill of managing change, skill of being agent, uh, and it's, it's, it's a skill uh, which, uh, you know, not many have and probably not all have, uh, is suddenly become, uh, you know, a key ingredient uh, to make a successful professional and a manager. So this was uh, the big, big shift that came. The second that came was the need for us to have a technology backbone to be able to support the volatility that you talk about. Uh, and I think we experienced it firsthand, uh, you know, when everything kind of came uh, to a standstill and, and, you know, offices were shut and people were homebound. Uh, you know, how could technology actually help us manage the situation? I mean, look at a very traditional uh, situation where you have a call center, where you know you have uh, lots of people sitting at uh, uh, a number of desks in, in, a, in a certain location and taking uh, customer calls, right? Now, to move all of that to, to people's homes uh, and get each of your call center representative to be sitting at home and, and actually, uh, you know, calls and, and solving, uh, uh, giving responses, solving uh, uh, issues and, and providing resolutions was a big shift. Uh, and I think this shift in the the shift in the way we look at the uh, wide picture of the world uh, and, and how do we manage that, uh, I think that, that that is something which came to the fore. So that is uh, another uh, thing that, that came. The third thing that uh, actually happened was the fact that a number of uh, digital assets that had been created and which unfortunately uh, in a sense, lying, uh, you know, dormant or, or, or uh, you know, their usage was, was very little, suddenly they became a lot more relevant. And I think that for us was, was, was very good because, you know, I mean, all of us have been investing over the years in creating those digital assets, hoping that somebody uh, someday would, uh, would actually, uh, you know, ad uh, adapt and adopt those, uh, you know, found uh, buyers for those uh, digital assets or found users uh, for those digital assets. Uh, and that is is something which actually it was very was very helpful because what it did was uh, you know in the initial period of the pandemic uh, it was like a proof of concept where some of those digital assets that had been put into play uh, you know you actually found out uh, how useful they were or how useless they were uh, and and uh, and how efficient uh, uh, and and sustainable they were going ahead so I think the number of learnings uh, have come out of uh, the situation uh, that all of us went into. Uh, you know, on the product front, uh, again, you know, as, as the said, I'm very disappointed with the kind of response we have seen as time has passed, uh, you know, in terms of uh, the awareness converting into sales. Uh, and this is not something new. I mean, we've seen it in the past where there's been flooding and, um, uh, you know, heavy monsoons and, 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 and earthquakes. Uh, and there was this momentary uh, awareness and the momentary uh, uh, kind of, uh, uh, you know, uh, where, where the consumer went out and did research on that, but actually, uh, you know, didn't result in much sales. And I think that's exactly uh, what we are uh, what we are seeing here. And, and that is uh, really a cultural thing where, you know, we believe, uh, you know, like ostriches, we put our head in, into the sand and believe nothing's going to happen to us. Everything will happen to our neighbor, or everything will happen to the town, uh, which is next to ours and not in our town. Uh, and that is is a is a big cultural thing, which and that true that's true not only for India but actually true for most of Asia. Uh, and this is uh, another reason why uh, you know the business uh, has the awareness has not converted in, into business. So I think these are some of the big learnings uh, that that uh, have have come out of this. And I think what all of this tells us is that the very basics of uh, general insurance. You know, the, the need to build trust, the need to build awareness, the need to build distribution, uh, the need to build simple products. You know, the very basics of general insurance uh, are, are as true today as they were prior to the pandemic and as they were prior, uh, you know, uh, true for uh, three or four years ago. So, so clearly, the re of the basics of building blocks, as far as this business is concerned, uh, is is to me, a, uh, you know, the the probably the most important learning. Uh, the need for capital, uh, the need to be able to create distribution, there is a, the distribution through partnerships. I think the reiteration of all of these is is something uh, uh, you know which uh, remains true today, post or rather you know towards the tail end of the pandemic, as I would like to call it, 
as it, it was, uh, you know, during the time of the pandemic or, or before the pandemic. And therefore, uh, you know, my belief is that, you know, as an industry, if we need to, you know, look at where we, we are going next or where we need to go next and, and how we can actually manage through this period of volatility, which is going to continue, you know, today is a pandemic, tomorrow it could be something else. The fact remains that we need to focus on these basics. The fact remains that we need to build the insurance companies and the other partners uh, in the insurance ecosystem uh, need to put in the capital and need to build sustainable businesses, not for valuation, but for uh, actually uh, being able to sustain for a long period of time and, and stay in business for a long uh, period of time. So the need for capital, and, and I'm talking of not just of insurance companies here, I'm talking of brokers here, I'm talking of uh, agents here, uh, and, and all other partners in the ecosystem need to invest and, and actually look at creating, you know, a much longer term view of, of where we need to go next. Uh, the, the distribution piece that I talked about is, is probably the most important because, you know, irrespective of uh, what we have seen. So if you look at, uh, you know, the uh, IIDA numbers for year ended, March, the online business, which is the direct to consumer business was just 1.5% of all the business that was done in the industry. Now, while we numbers of uh, you know what it, it could probably end up in in march 21 uh, but i would be surprised if it is more than three or four percent or more than twice or thrice of what it is but it's a small base that we started from so 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 this whole you know noise that is being made about the fact that people are going digital and want to buy digital is is still uh, you know not converting or not showing up in, in in numbers and therefore we need to go to the root cause of that and go behind that and see what what is it really that's that's holding people back uh, and, and to me, one of the big things there is trust. Uh, and I think that is, is something where we today have a huge gap. So, so there's a trust gap between the insurance company and the intermediary, between the intermediary and the customer, between the customer and the insurance company. And, 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 and this is the, the trust gap that is actually holding us back and actually pulling us down. So the first thing that, that we need to do is, is actually to work on this. Uh, once that uh, piece is, is, is to some extent addressed, you know, the whole issue about awareness will then start to get converted in, in, into business. Because even when there is awareness today, uh, there is no trust. And therefore, the believe that, you know, I would rather depend on my neighbor and I would rather depend on my family than I would depend on the insurance company in time of my need. Uh, and this is the big problem uh, that, that, is, that is actually holding us back. So that people don't suffer losses. It's not that people don't realize the risks. But they have, they depend on on others rather than insurance companies, and I and, and that is the, the the chain that we need to break. We need to bring there and 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 and, and expect them and, and actually encourage them to depend on insurance companies uh, to 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 actually bail them out uh, of their uh, troubled times uh, in uh, you know in, in 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 times of crisis. So I think that is the, once you do that, then an effective distribution can really convert that you know trust and awareness into sales. Uh, and I think that is is the second piece, and that is where today I think there is a complete lack in terms of the capital to be invested in that distribution. You know, just look at what's happening in our industry today, and how much new capital is coming into the industry. Uh, if we need to go out into these small towns, into the villages, and and at the taluka levels to to be able to do business, you know, it has to be face to face to, to uh, kind of interaction. You know, there has to be a conversation. You know, there, there needs to be a need to convince. And that is, is not possible today uh, or probably in the next four or five years also through the digital route that uh, we are talking of. So I think there are a number of gaps there. But but basically, you know, if I was to kind of conclude here and then say, what is the big uh, learning that we got from, from this pandemic is that there is no getting away from business. Uh, and, and, and unless and until we build on those, you know, there could be two more pandemics tomorrow and there could be five more NatCats events that could happen day after uh, and, and people still won't buy insurance. So, so, so that is, 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 uh, is something which, which uh, you know, I'll probably end my uh, you know, response to your uh, question with. Thank you, Mr. Rupam. I think actually when you are speaking about simplification of the terms, right, I remembered a report. It mentioned about a you know, lot of people find products a bit complex and there is a you know, push to make you know, the terms in insurance industry is simpler for the end users. I think on the same line, I think I'd like to come back again. What are the must have strategies insurance company should look after to be more agile? And I'd like to invite Mr. Rishi to touch base upon this similar point. 
like how did you fare in the pandemic and, and how, how can our insurance can stay agile in these kind of crises mr rishi yeah so i think uh, 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 thanks akash uh, i think the main point that you uh, you know i would like to touch base here is also the fact that uh, uh, the pandemic uh, you know while it has uh, impacted the uh, insurance industry in different different ways it has uh, definitely created uh, uh, you know the sense of uncertainty uh, among customers and that i think is a slightly longer term opportunity which will emerge over a period of time i agree with what uh, tapan is saying that the immediate opportunity uh, you know perhaps seems to have uh, been a little underplayed and uh, you know we haven't seen the demand emerging in that uh, uh, strength as we sh should have but uh, i think uh, over a slightly longer period of time i think we do uh, you know will find changes that will happen in customer behavior and uh, uh, in many other areas i think we have seen that coming to your specific point uh, regarding agility uh, i think uh, agility is uh, is more of a question of uh, of mind i don't think it's uh, it's only about uh, uh, about technology so uh, i think there's a lot of uh, uh, thought process that uh, you know in order to be uh, using uh, ag agile processes or whatever you need to kind of have very very uh, uh, you know uh, cutting edge technology i don't i don't think that's what is needed what is more needed is the ability to uh, you know look at problems in a very uh, uh, different manner uh, which typically involves uh, people uh, you know in in smaller and closer groups working together and uh, and finding uh, solutions which can kind of work uh, uh, for the uh, at least deliver something which is uh, which is working well and then over a period of time constantly try and keep optimizing and moving it uh, to the next level so i think that's more of a a way of thinking a way of designing that's uh, uh, that's that that actually brings uh, uh, you know work to get uh, accomplished in a much faster manner so in simple words i would say that uh, that's what would be uh, uh, you know uh, the more important part for us to uh, uh, as an industry to uh, embrace uh, more agile manners of thinking before we uh, you know uh, try to use the enabling technologies uh, to get to more agile uh, 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 modes of working so that's what i think is the start of uh, uh, of what we require from an agility perspective uh, as far as uh, uh, you know the overall uh, uh, perspective and we are doing a bit of crystal ball gazing here uh uh in this uh, forum so i would say that uh, there are some secular trends which which we can't wish away i mean you know the fact that uh, um uh, the population is aging the fact that people are uh, you know converting to more financial uh, ways of managing their risk and financial ways of saving is uh, is a reality and that's uh, that's a secular trend which we have seen in other countries as well and is uh, is being seen in india as well uh so uh, so that's that's what i think is uh, uh, is uh, when we look at say for example 2030 uh, uh these are some of the trends which will uh, you know create opportunity and which will create uh, uh, you know uh, ability for us to uh, uh, reach out to a larger uh, uh, population than what we currently do i agree that uh, uh, we have yet uh, uh, just touched the surface i think in most uh, uh you know uh, networks for example in 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 public sector banks and my friend prashab is here on this call i'm sure he can validate that uh, you know the penetration into uh, into some of our uh, banking partners is is still well uh, uh, you know in in single digits so it still is uh, is still uh, much more to uh, and therefore i think uh, the opportunity is is, is quite large uh, uh, we do need to innovate more in terms of being able to bring uh, more relevant products out into the uh, uh, into the market and uh, that would require a lot of uh, agile development uh, uh, which will be needed in thinking i would say more than uh, uh, you know the enablement of uh, of technology to be able to get there so uh, uh, that's what i think in terms of uh, uh, you know how we can harness more agility in our in our day to day working in uh, uh, in in the sector
Thanks, Rishi, for that. I think moving on, since we have been touching based on the digital transformation, I'd like to bring in the other angle, which is leadership. So as a financial leader, how much should we be in sync with the digital transformation? Right? I think as per report, it has been mentioned to survive or thrive in this kind of vulnerable or uncertain times. We have to use the backbone of you know, digital or digital infrastructure. Right? So what are your views around the leadership or how much a leadership should be in sync with digital transformation? And second is, what are the digital transformation events have you seen in your journey in the last decade? I'd like to call Ms. Shanai on this question. Right. Shanai, what is your observation? What are your insights? And what uh, would be a suggestion for the leaders? Yeah. Um, thank you, Akash. I think uh, digital transformation is a much used and abused word. So, uh, you know, everyone says there's a joke going around, right? What what have what helped digital transformation, CEO, CTO, or COVID? And obviously, COVID was the right answer. But I think even before the pandemic happened, everyone is uh, uh, woke, I think, in the industry. Everyone realized, everyone is aware, all insurers, to the potential of digital transformation. But I just like to speak into some of the points raised earlier. Technology, pursuit of technology for the sake of technology is not the idea right and you, you need to have a clear sense of purpose what you want to do with the technology and insurance we have two sides of the in, entire insurance ecosystem apart from the other players we have demand side challenge and we have a supply side challenge uh i think technology helps us solve a lot of supply side challenges not all mind you but a lot of supply side challenges and also some of the challenges uh, that would uh, some of the barriers to you know purchase, which would help address some of the demand side challenges. But of course, it's not the silver bullet that it's made out to me, and it's not that you, you know it's not the holy grail for an insurer to be described as a tech company. I know it's very uh, uh, it's very glamorous today to be called a tech company, but tech not for the purpose of uh, not for the sake of calling yourself a tech company, but what purpose it achieves and that's why i think as a company we need to have a very clear uh, sense of purpose as to what digital transformation or what digital means to you means to you and that is the first thing i think the leader's uh, role is that you know have a very clear sense of purpose what digital will do or what digital transformation means to you and what purpose business purpose it achieves and um, and this is where I think most of the times we don't articulate it enough. We don't repeat it enough because, you know, it's not good to just articulate it once and communicate. There's value in repetition. So you have to constantly keep on repeating it so that people are constantly connected to what you're trying to achieve. Uh, apart from that, you know, I've heard a lot of times um, digital being equated with a mode of distribution. or a And that's really minimizing impact that it can have and uh, while yes customers are migrating to uh, digital channels the power of migrating the other parts of the ecosystem especially distribution onto digital which is not to say it's direct to customer so i actually do not agree with a lot of uh, um, you know reports that write an epitaph of intermediation especially in india because we are very far from that but yes is there potential for the distribution to become more digital and so that it enhances their productivity, sure, of course, it's there. So, like coming back to what I said, the role of the leader, the first thing is be very clear about the purpose of digital transformation and keep on communicating it. The second, and it's some, and this one is really uh, the heart of the entire digital transformation, is cultural transformation. And leaders themselves have to be the change agent, they have to lead by example they have to build enthusiasm for the opportunities and for the business impact that technology can have they have to demonstrate these are all elements of the culture that they have to build they have to demonstrate curiosity and learnability and uh, they you have to build diversity of thought and input you have to institutionalize an outside in perspective and collaborate agile working has already been spoken of so i'm not going to talk about that but the one thing that I find missing, at least even in all organization, is um, uh, you know encouraging 
experimentation. We've all heard of learn fast, fail fast kind of uh, MVB kind of models. But I mean, hand to heart, how many of us have actually structurally institutionalized it in our uh, organizations? Digital re transformation requires uh, encouragement of experimentation. It, it requires to reward people who think uh, to quote a cliche out of the box and it may not succeed it may fail also but uh, encouraging experimentation goes beyond encouraging successful experimentation it means just successful experiment it means just experimentation so these are a few things uh, apart from you know clarity of purpose and why you're doing it cultural transformation and actually lead that is the other role that digit, uh, you know, leaders have to play in digital transformation. And lastly, I would say getting the right talent. And right talent in three areas, which are core to digital transformation, of course, technology. But technology leaders who, who understand, who are both breadth and depth, very difficult to find, honestly. But you have to invest that time and effort to find the right uh, technology. In insurance, we also sometimes find there's a lack of engineering talent. So that has to be covered up. And you have to have people who have a business head on their shoulders. So, you know, some, some like a product uh, organization within technology is something that you have to have. You have to have the right talent in data. Uh, so I read somewhere that, you know, data scientists are at the very core great storytellers. And that really... Uh, resonated with me because data tells you a story. So data science has to, people have to be able to tell stories with their data and communicate that to business. So getting the right data scientists. And last but not least, people who are process experts. Uh, insurance, I, I have yet to find any aspect which can completely be done by one function. There are specialist functions within insurance, whether you call it underwriting or claims. Or, or sales or actuarial, but stitching that all together and looking at it end to end and seeing how it impacts the customer needs um, a very strong process excellence orientation. You need to have certain guidelines that you know uh, uh, that that have to go into every process design. And this is not a skill that this is not something that everyone can do. It's a learned skill. It's an acquired skill. So either you train for that or you hire for that. So getting this right talent is also important across these three areas. And um, and therefore, if uh, so, these three things, I think the role of a leader in digital transformation is uh, primarily in these three areas. So you touched upon, I think the essence is you should ask why we are doing it and then try to align with the culture and the talent and then take it forward. Right. On the same line, I'd like to, you know, like pick the mind of Mr. Rushab, like what has been his journey on digital transformation and what are his thoughts around how a leader should see this entire journey. Uh, <clears throat> so thanks, Akash. I'll kind of try to tackle the second bit of the question first, uh, you know, which is understanding the role of a leader within the digital transformation mm -hmm. journey. Uh, and and uh, you know when I actually saw the list of questions, I found this to be one of the more interesting questions. And I kind of like what any prudent guy would do, right? Started googling leadership ka role kya hai. And I kind of said, what was the role role of a leader ten years back? I got a few points. I went and saw what the role of a leader twenty years back was. I got the same points. I got the role. I got points for what the leader is supposed to do thirty years back. And interestingly, the points were the same. And you know the points are very very standard. You'll have stuff like clarity of purpose, you know, ability to inspire change, you know, flexibility of thought, you know, ability to think into the future, you know, need for speed, crisp communication, and so on and so forth. And what I realized is that uh, the digital transformation journey, notwithstanding, right, the role of the leader per se is not really, really going to change. Yes, what might change is uh, the relative importance of each uh, leadership trait. And uh, to my mind. Uh, uh, the three traits, you know, of a leader that will especially be needed, you know, when it comes to navigating an organization through the digital transformation journey is uh, first and foremost, you know, uh, you know, clearly, you know, ability to inspire, uh, you know, change organizations will need to change. They will need to adapt. They will need to improvise. Uh, uh, 
and all this is not to thrive but simply to survive now the second uh, you know leadership trait i think which is going to be very very critical uh, you know is the ability to you know crystal ball gaze and do that accurately uh, clearly uh, uh, tomorrow will be very very different from what today is uh, and i think the last bit uh, uh, you know akash in my mind would be would be agility would be speed i think a lot has been said so i won't dwell too much on it uh, but uh, i think even shanay kind of touched upon it but uh, you know we will witness clearly uh, you know fail fast learn fast era Uh, visa be a uh, you know be fail safe era uh, you know uh, uh, and i think a leader will have to adapt uh, you know accordingly so quickly to recap and i know we are behind sketch so i'm not going to take too much more time but quickly to recap the leadership traits really haven't changed too much and they won't change going forward what will change is the relative importance for each each trait i think you also re put the word on experimentation right experiment is the sense of the leadership absolutely absolutely <coughs> Yeah, I mean, in, in the same line, since we are talking digital transformation, I'll I'll go a bit specific around the technology solutions. Right? Like we have seen usage of cloud, digital payment, digital payment is the backbone of new India, and IoT, which Neeraj, Mr. Neeraj mentioned about the smart machine. I'd like to pick minds of Mr. Shankar. Right? How do you he he see how do you see these technologies coming to insurance industry and helping them grow their businesses? Right. Yeah, uh, thank you very much for that. I mean, um, the company just yes, the companies who were on cloud, they did much well in 2020 during pandemic. Some went to companies were not on the cloud, right? And, and I'm sure you know we'll we'll agree with this. So again, what do you think, Shankar? Like, what are your thoughts around these technologies being used in the insurance segment directly? Yeah. Uh, so one of the things that we did, um, Lloyd's is a 330-year-old market, uh, and basically what we did about five years ago is we set up a Lloyd's lab. Um, what we do there is essentially we invite uh, young, technological, out-of-the-box thinkers who essentially come and try and disrupt the way you do business, and that could be anything, right? In terms of your claims payment, your underwriting. Uh, your uh, your valuation of a risk, your understanding of the risk, etc. Everything. You, uh, so we did five cohorts of those, and we essentially bring these people together. There's about 20 different uh, teams that come together every year, and then we give them the space, we give them the data in Lloyd's, we get basically give them all the support that they need, and we then say, okay, now you go away for 10 weeks, you do whatever you have to do, and come back to us with what you think should be done. and this is then presented back to the market essentially for them to take a look at this and then say this is a proposal that we are willing to support and lloyd basically invests in that along with the other capital uh, support the that the uh, teams get with a view to trying to bring it up to a certain scale and then basically take it out into the commercial environment as well as necessary so that's one of the things that we did and we continue to invest in that kind of technology because i think that's the transformational agenda that's happening and if we are a 330 year old market going through that i'm sure a lot of the other companies yeah. are much more nimble and much more flexible mm -hmm. uh, and agile that they need to be in order for them to survive for another 100 odd years uh, the other thing which we've also created and and this is probably a force of nature right so we a lot of people still look at lloyds is that uh, archaic marketplace where we sit in london uh, thousands of underwriters sitting there with brokers coming in with risks and it's a very active probably the last known active physical exchange that's still there in the in the market mm -hmm. and with covid when the underwriting room was shut and it's still shut today what we did quickly was to try and create a virtual underwriting room and that basically allows brokers and underwriters to to meet in a virtual space and still share knowledge say, share the risk information understand what it is that they want to really do and how do they take this forward in terms of what is the information that is required so that's something that started off with just the us property casualty um, business initially but by january we've now opened it up to all classes and that's based okay that right now it's still limited to the uk market but during 2021 we are now going to looking at extending it beyond in terms of how that can be extended across various ge geographies around the world and the last point that i want to also mention is uh we're in the business of paying claims and 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 a lot of uh, you know points that were made earlier by both uh, tapan rupam uh, etc in terms of basically saying 
you know, there's the trust factor, there's the uh, perception, mm -hmm. people still don't buy uh, insurance, even though they've suffered a loss, etc. The one thing that we need to understand, what is it that they want? They want, when we pay a premium, they want something in it. What's in it for me? And if I can pay that claim quickly, um, so if it's a low value claim, just pay it. By the time you sit and engage an OS adjuster, you get a lawyer involved, take it to a court, dispute, or even your claims team sitting and, you know, 10,000 people going through the files and then saying, yes, pay this 50 rupee claim. Is it really worth it? Uh, so if it's a small value claim, sometimes it's always better to just pay it because you probably have earned the trust and the mm. respect of the uh, policyholder who's actually able to say, OK, look, I submitted a claim. Uh, I fully take on board the fraudulent aspect of it. And that's a different issue that we need to deal with. But some of the low value claims can be paid very quickly. And, and I think as an industry, we need to basically uh, be in a position where we're able to sit down and say, my claims paying ability is this much. This is the amount of claims that I've paid during this period yeah. within this amount of time. And I think this is where, again, technology is coming to the forefront for us at Lloyd's, where we're trying to say, how can we make claims much more automated, especially for low value claims? And that's uh, that's something that we're going through right now. Thank you, Mr. Shankar. That's helpful. Since we are running in out of time, I'll just touch base on last topic of ours. Right? I mean, we haven't spoken much on the health insurance part. Health insurance is one of the largest segments inside the insurance industry. And so I'd like to know, right, how has the perception, perception of customers changed before COVID and after COVID when it comes to health insurance? I request Mr. Vikas to share his views around it. And sorry, Mr. Vikas, for coming late. Just have a few minutes left. So I no, no worries. Uh, no worries there. Um, I think the the answer is as short as it can be. You know, in the in the life of health insurance uh, industry, I don't think we've ever had a situation where we would have the Prime Minister of India standing at the Red Fort and talking about health insurance. So I think uh, in terms of awareness, in terms of necessity, in terms of just uh, just the amplification of the need for health insurance, enough has been done. And as uh, you know, Tapan rightly pointed out, um, the problem lies elsewhere. The problem doesn't lie in um, in, the, in the need being uh, felt by the customers, but it actually is about satisfaction of that need. While there is digitization, there is more reach, etc. Uh, there is still the last mile, and I agree with the, you know with this, you know some of the speakers who said that I don't see the end of intermediation immediately in India. Uh, there is that last mile which still needs to reach out and give comfort that yes, this is the right product or uh, no, this is not the right product. And that also ties in with the fact that some of the speakers before we have spoken about the trust uh, deficit that uh, exists. Uh, I also want to add something else, which is beyond the product being available, beyond digital processes being available, beyond intermediation being available, is that there is a real supply side problem as well of products. The kind of products that we talk about today, I think there's a need to simplify those products. Take a simple example of motor insurance. Forget health. Health is in its own way very complicated. Uh, you know, when we start talking about health insurance, we, we have like doctors, you know, just to ma make somebody explain what is health insurance. You take motor insurance, which is a mandated insurance, etc. And you ask people, and not people from the insurance industry, but do they really understand what is covered? What do they understand when you say, Oh, there is an OD part of the policy, there's a PP part of the policy, there's a CPA part of the policy. Now, let me explain to you. OD is covered for one year, TP is covered for five years, CPA is covered for one year. Since, you know, what's happening here? You know, are we really making products simple or are we making them more complicated? And don't get me started on the health insurance bill. Okay, on health insurance, there is, you know, there is so much of, uh, you know, terms that are, fly, that, are, that are thrown around that it really becomes really difficult for the customer to, uh, to engage and really come to a conclusion on saying, okay, here I go. I'm going to click this. I'm going to buy this product. Uh, you know, uh, Mr. Singer made a very valid point that, you know, we had a very, we have a very simple product today, but people are simply not buying. And that ties in with what Shanai said, that intimidation is still a still an issue. So I, you know, I think digitization is is more of a is a is a mindset issue. You know, it's not only about the technology that you deploy, but are you really thinking about about simplification? Are you really talking about we must tell the truth to the customer what is covered and what is not covered? Are we fixing the supply side of the equation? I mean, today hotels got closed. We don't have an insurance for 
a, a, a bi a business interruption which is caused by by which is not caused by property damage why i mean there could be a very simple solution to uh, so, to that kind of a uh, of a problem so uh, so i mean the, the penetration problem of india will not get resolved unless we have simple products that are that are simple to communicate and we as an industry uh, you know really put our mind behind just simplifying products now one once the once the shampoos were started to make into sachets the product sales went up so i mean you know we must learn from that then you know before we came into this room sunai said something very nicely saying uh, insur general insurance is the fmcg of finance and i i love that line i mean and that's so true you know uh, we, we just don't have velocity of products today we just have products but no velocity behind that so i know the time is up so i'll pause here uh, back to you akash sure no i think we we have Yeah, have you seen uptake in the health insurance demand after covid that's a curious question from my side oh yes oh yes uh, there is uh, there is no doubt uh, that there has been an uptake in the uh, health insurance industry uh, and the health insurance industry as we stand in as of ytd january was up about 19% uh, which has traditionally been about 14 or 15% so it has gone up it now constitutes okay. about uh, 38% of the total industry ytd january against 40% of motor which the difference used to be much higher in fact in quarter 1 of this year health insurance was more than motor insurance and if you think about it mm-hmm. logically so uh, so there and and this is something that i think you know leaders saw at least 3 years back saying health insurance will become the largest uh, product uh, when compared to even motor and that's i think we are on par uh, par for the course uh, to be doing that got yeah. it thanks thank you mr vikas Thank you, thank you so much, Mr. Sinha. And uh, uh, since it's a virtual summit and we have a time constraint, uh, I we would need to conclude this panel session. But I would uh, really like to thank all of you to join in, and uh, it was some really uh, great insight to know uh, from you regarding the uh, you know uh, future of the insurance industry from a leader's perspective. And a special thanks to Mr. Neeraj Prakash who uh, could not stay with us to. Uh, entire session but we could uh, have his insights in the initial 10 minutes and uh, also thanks to mr sinha for uh, wonderfully moderating the panel session thank you to all the panel members thank for you. your time and your insights and we look forward to see you in our next annual as well thank you thank you, thank you.